Everyone's talking about the 5090, but what about the 70 and 80 class cards? If you're on the edge of your seat about Blender performance, buckle up, this is the deep dive you've been waiting for. Now, if you're interested in this sort of thing, you probably binged all the 5090 content you can get your hands on. I know I have. However, with the 5080 reviews restricted until launch day, is Nvidia hiding something or are we missing the bigger picture? Let's unravel this together. Hi, I'm Mike, your creative tech chap, where I will guide you through what you need to know. Now, over the years, I've spent a great deal of time optimizing Blender and getting settings right to eke out every bit of performance I can from my GPU. However, nothing beats upgrading the hardware capability. The 5090 is faster than the 4090 by a significant margin. It also draws a lot more power as well. And we now have a leaked 5080 result, which was only 100 points off of my prediction for it. So I'm pretty confident that the 5070 Ti and the 5070 scores will be relatively accurate. And I've included timestamps below if you want to jump to anything specific. So let's go over the data. Let's have a look at the top 20 for the Blender 4.3 Optics Benchmark score. Now we can see here there's quite a smooth trend as we go up in the number of cards all the way up to around the 4080 Super. At that point things really start accelerating all the way up to the 5090 score. And I know not a lot of people are excited about the 5090. And, and when it comes to generational improvements, if you have a base score of 1000 and you jump to 2000, that's obviously a two times speed increase. And then when you jump to 3000, that's still the same gain as before, it's still another 1000 points, but now it's only 50% gains. So I can understand why, especially with the additional power draw that people don't see this as an improvement, but if you're willing to and able to supply that power in terms of cost and you have the power supply for it, then I don't see any reason why not to celebrate this lift of another 4,000-ish points. Anyway, back to the chart. I want to congratulate here Apple for having three of these uh, chips, the M4 and the M3 Max, in the top 20 for this. And I know some things are missing from this chart. As I mentioned, I've basically cut out anything that's a non-consumer card or any duplicates and I've removed laptops from here because those numbers are all over the place depending on the power but you can see here the 4070 itself is banging right up against the 3090 and I think the 5070 is just going to be slightly faster than that 3090 and all being well we should see the 5070 Ti basically matching or exceeding a 4070 Ti Super. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is that if you end up with a fast 4070 Ti Super, that may in fact beat a lower performing 5070 Ti. That's quite possible. And that's true of all the cards that are really close to one another. Let's have a look just at the 70 class optic scores. So here you can see the 2070 is where we start and the 5070 Ti is where we're gonna stop. And you can see a generation uplift from the 20 series to the 30 series. And there's a slight bump with the Super or the TI that was at the time. Then we end up with the real cluster of 4070, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti, 4070 Ti Super, so many variations of that card, but they're actually quite different in their performance. So I actually think a 4070 Super is gonna be faster than the 5070. But from a 4070 standpoint, it is going to be faster. And I think there's some of this is going to be kind of obfuscated because when people compare cards, they often just compare the names themselves. And if you go ahead and just compare the names themselves, are you really comparing like for like? I don't think you are. I think you really need to look at the price point that these things end up being sold at to do a proper comparison. And there's a, a great example in the 80 class cards, what we'll get to in a moment, that they had the 50, sorry, the 4080 and the 4080 Super. Now the 4080 Super end up selling for about 200 pounds less in the UK. So it's around a thousand pounds. So I would directly compare that with the 5080. And you can see here at the very top of the chart, this is only about 300 points different. So I would expect this to be quite close depending on whether or not you've got a higher powered 5070 Ti or whether it's got better cooling. All of these sorts of things can impact your benchmark score. 
Now I want to move on to this next slide here where we've got the improvements. So direct improvements between the 70 series themselves. And you can see that I'm just jumping up here between the 20 to the 30 to the 40 to the 50 series. And you can see the increases. And when you see this small 9, 10% increase from the 4070 to the 5070, I can understand why some people are going to be disappointed with that much gain. But, and I will probably say this later on in more detail, you probably shouldn't be upgrading from a 40 to a 50 series card unless you're changing class. So maybe going from a 4070 to a 5080 as an example. Anyway, I will leave this on the screen. I'm not going to go through each one of these. There are some massive improvements if you're going from um, a, a second series card as we've seen all the way up. But this is just something to bear in mind. I'll leave this here. Pause the video if you want to have a look at your card and how it compares to the 5070 or the 5070 Ti. You can do that. Let's move on to the 80 class. And I will apologize here. I'm not going to go back and correct it now. This is really the 70 class rather than the 70 series. I've been mixing up those a lot. Now, I've included the 1080 here. And the main reason for that is I want to see this huge improvement here and explain the technology advancements. The 20 series is where ray tracing came around. So I did go from a 1080 to a 2070 back in the day. I believe it was that. I never went for a 2080 at all. I didn't go to an 80 class card, but I went from a 1080 to a 2070. And from that 2070, I jumped to a 3090. So this huge leap here when we get to the figures in a moment is because new technology came available you can run optics on CUDA cores rather than using the ray tracing cores however it's slower and that's what we see down here so we've got this huge leap and that's also to uh, due to the process node as well and then when we went from the 20 series to the 30 series we had another huge leap and then finally to the 40 series a big leap 4080 and the 4080 super now I think there will be a leap from where we've got our 4080 super to the 5080 but again it's not going to be that big of an improvement and this i thought was going to be about half the score of a 5090 which would have placed it slower than the 4080 in my guesswork but fortunately with the higher clock speeds it is actually coming out just over 9000 on the blender benchmark score OK, so let's have a look at these numbers. And again, I will leave them on the screen so you can go through them in your own time. I've included the same as before. So we're just going to jump so you can see the generational improvements over here. And it does get a bit messy as you get towards the top here. If you're comparing the 4080 to the 5080, it looks like it's going to be around 10%, including from the super upwards. However, if you're going from, let's say, the 3080 to the 4080, that's going to be about 22% difference from the 3080 to the 4080 Super, as I've got here. Now, they're very similar in performance, the 4080 and the 4080 Super. So again, one of the best ways of looking at everything is this original chart back here. So back to the generational improvements of going from the 1080 to the 5080, 50, nearly 16 times the speed. Now, the 1080 is still a very good card. It's got quite a bit of VRAM compared. I think it's got eight gigabytes. So even some modern cards still have eight gigabytes. And it's around the same speed that I use on my M1 MacBook Pro, which I take everywhere with me. And I find it, yes, a little bit slow compared to my current 3090. But it gets the job done. None of these cards are essentially slow these days. If you're going from the 1080 Ti, then it's not quite a as jump, but it's 11 times the speed. And you can see here, as we get closer and closer, we get less of a performance increase. And of course, the reason why a 4080 isn't here is because that one is over here. So these are all here for you. And let's have a look at the 90 series cards. So the 90 series cards or the tie cards, I've actually included the 1080 Ti in this one, the 2080, just to see that huge, great big leap. Then we've got the 3090 and the 3090 Ti. I think it's important to see how close some of these cards actually are because some uh, TI varieties are much, much bigger, or a much bigger improvement than before. And I know I've missed, I think, the Titan or the Titan X from down here, but that's a very long time ago now. And the 4090 to the 5090, it really does have a much bigger leap. And that's primarily because of the core increase. Let's have a look 
at the values themselves. As you can see here, there are monumental increases from really early on. And again, one of the things we need to remember is as we get further and further down uh, the speed increases, the percentages will drop. Uh, as I said earlier on, 1,000 to 2,000 points is 100% improvement. It's twice the speed. But then if you add on the same amount, again, it's only 50%. If the same amount, again, it's only 25%. So you can start to get an increase. So you can start Start to get this perception when you just look at the percentage figures that things are slowing down and they're not they're just going linearly which is also fine and i would be quite happy with this 36 percent improvement between the 4090 and the 5090 but i'll leave this on the screen just like the others so you can use it to compare your current card uh, to others in the series or indeed uh, if you're jumping from top of the class card to top of the class card now this is what you would expect to see as you make those jumps. Now, to the 4090 to the 5090, this 36% improvement is massive. When it comes to the 80 series cards, that 10% is not a lot. The 7 series cards, we're talking about 4% if we're comparing the 4070 Ti Super to the 5070 Ti, and around 10% again for the 4070 to 5070. So it doesn't look like some of the upgrades are going to be anywhere near as big as people might have been hoping, especially after seeing the 5090 scores. Render performance is just one part of a bigger picture. Remember, not everybody needs the absolute best rendering speeds. And for some workflows, it won't make any difference, even in Blender. Let's face it, you can always leave your computer rendering at the end of the day or while you sleep. And it's also important to realize that none of these cards that I've shown you today are slow. And the real value depends on your use case, especially if your GPU is part of your livelihood. Price is a difficult thing to discuss. Things cost different th amounts all over the world. And let's face it, if you bought a 30 series card around launch, the prices for the 50 series card are going to seem downright cheap. And one thing I do want to run through is the process nodes. We've talked about this from the 10 series onwards. We're looking at... Uh, I think it was 16 nanometers for the 10 series, 12 nanometers for the 20 series, so a drop of four, eight nanometers for the 30 series, four nanometers for the 40 series, and we're still on four nanometer. And those process nodes govern how fast things can run. And basically, the smaller, the better, the more circuitry you can cram into a small space. So without getting technical, all of those node shrinks that we've seen, all the way from 16 down to 4 nanometers, make a fundamental difference in those big jumps. So if we have a quick look back at the charts. Okay, so let's just have a look at the uh, 90 and TI class scores. This jump here was a process node plus new technology. We had our ray tracing cores. Then we shrink node again and we get this huge jump. We shrink node again and... This was out of this world. This 4090 score, they really knocked it out of the park with that one. And everybody thought it was fantastic. Now we've got an extra 3090 speed, basically. Well, not quite, uh, but bolted onto the end of it. And everybody's unhappy. I don't know about this gap here. As a creator, I think this is a huge increase and I'm really happy to see it, despite the extra power draw. And the extra power draw is there because the these process nodes are the same. So the only way of getting more performance is either more cores or more power, or in this case, both. And the 5090 does that. However, I don't think we're going to see the 70, the 70 Ti and the 80. Well, they're not going to change that much. And if you're already on a 40 series card, the jump will not blow your mind unless you change class of card. So if you're going from a 70 to an 80, then that's going to make a big difference. But for the 30 series or below, the upgrade is a bit more tempting. And while I can see a genuine reason to go from a 4090 to a 5090, if you're using that 4090 to its full potential, then you will definitely be able to use the 5090's power. However, the others don't seem like much of an upgrade until you go back to the 30 series and beyond. So is the NVIDIA embargo hiding even more surprises with the 5080? Now keep the discussion going in the comments. What's your prediction? Are you going to try and get an older card? 
you know, for less while the new ones come out. And if you want more data deep dives like this, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. See you later.